Hi, welcome to Pencil College. In today's video, we'll be looking at more examples from ch chapter 13.2, in particular, the double angle formula for trigo. Okay, so in example number 6, we are asked to solve the following trigo equation, tangent 2y times tangent y equals to 5 for this range of y between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, before we go any further, just want to point out that over here, we have a problem, okay, and the problem is tangent 2y. So how, what, are going, what are we going to do to tangent 2y, okay, so, so as to reduce it into some form which can help us solve the equation. So if we stare at the tangent double angle formula over here on the top left hand corner of your screen, you realize that I can do a simple transformation. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is to introduce or rather to substitute this value of tangent 2y into the given equation. So tangent 2y is actually 2 tangent y over 1 minus tangent square y. Okay, so I just, I've just done a simple substitution of the tangent 2y or rather the tangent double angle formula. The next thing I'm going to do is to multiply both sides of the equation by 1 minus tangent square y. Okay, 1 minus tangent square y. By doing so, you will see that this will eliminate the denominator on the left hand side of the equation. So I'll end up with 2 tangent y times tangent y equals to then concurrently, I will expand this side of the equation. So 5 times 1 will give me 5 minus 5 tangent square y. Okay, and over here, if I were to simplify further, I will just have 2 tangent square y. Okay, and concurrently, let me just shift the negative 5 tangent square y over to the left hand side of the equation. So plus 5 tangent square y equals to 5. So I've just shifted this term over to the left hand side of the equation. So simplifying this a little bit further, I'll have 7 tangent square y equals to 5 and simplifying further, tangent square y is equals to 5 over 7. Okay, before I take the square root of this, okay, I would just like to point out that whenever you take the square root of any number, you will have a positive as well as a negative value. Okay, therefore, by taking square root both sides, I will end up with tangent y equals to the square root of 5 over 7 or tangent y equals to negative of the square root of 5 over 7. Okay, and then my alpha or basic angle will be the same for both. Okay, so alpha will just be tangent inverse root of 5 over 7. Now, let me plot on the ASTC diagram. Okay, so, so since we have the same, we have the same, uh, how would I say, uh, we have the same alpha or the same, ba same basic angle and we have positive as well as negative values for tangent of y, we will basically be considering all the possibilities from 0 to 2 pi, which is the entire quadrant. Okay, so what do I mean? So y can, okay, for the first scenario, since tangent is positive, it can be in the all quadrant. Okay, so y can be up to here. Okay, so y is here. And, sim and uh, for the first scenario, remember that it's a very special scenario because my basic angle happens to be here as well. Okay. Now the next scenario, okay, or rather, sorry, the next possibility, since tangent y is a positive value, we can be also in the tangent quadrant. So y can be up to here. Okay, so this means that we can go up to here. And similarly, let me indicate my basic angle alpha, which is just over here. Alpha. Now the next thing I will do is to look at scenario number two, okay, which is this scenario over here, okay, where tangent y is gives me a negative value. So, you know, probably to uh to to make the diagram look a little clearer, let me just erase what's on the current ASDC diagram. Okay, so now that tangent y gives me a negative value, I can be either in the sine quadrant or the cosine quadrant. 
okay so when tangent y is here so y y goes up to here let me draw in my right angle triangle and then also let me identify my alpha so alpha is over here okay recall that alpha is always made with respect to the horizontal axis and the other possibility will be in the cosine quadrant so we're, we're going to go all the way here okay so in the second scenario alpha is just over here so this is my alpha okay now let me just write down all the possibilities for y so in this second scenario y can be 180 degrees which is pi okay pi minus alpha or 2 pi minus alpha and previously we explored the first scenario so in the first scenario y can just be alpha or pi plus alpha okay so pressing all of these values into my calculator don't forget to work out your alpha alpha is just tangent inverse square root of 5 over 7 and also Please check that your calculator is in the appropriate mode, which in this case, we should be in the radian mode, okay, since all the values are in terms of pi. So working this out using our calculator and rounding it, all the answers off to three significant figures, we will have these four values, okay, I'll just arrange them in, in uh, ascend, ascending orders, so it's easier for you to see. Okay, and th there we have it, the four answers for example number six. Okay, let's move on to the next example, example number 7. In example number 7, we are asked to prove the following identity. So on the left hand side, we have sine A over 1 plus cosine A. And on the right hand side, we have tangent half of A. Okay, so to make it more obvious, I'll put a bracket around here. Okay, let me also probably, you know, just remind you guys that tangent half of A is in fact sine of half A okay over cosine of half a okay because tangent is actually sine over cosine okay so we'll, we'll be making use of this fact later on okay but you know to to start matters off i will probably proceed with the left hand side of the identity so lhs over here stands for left hand side okay so to break down sine A into something that contains half A, I will be, be making use of the sine double angle formula. As you can see on the top left hand corner of your screen, I've just highlighted it. So using this, I will have 2 sine of half A times cosine of half A. Okay. Now the next thing I will do is to make use of the cosine double angle formula. So to, to uh, make it obvious to you, in particular I will be using this double angle formula over here. Okay, cosine 2a equals to 2 cosine square a minus 1, as you can see from the top left hand corner of your screen. So 1 plus okay, 2 cosine square, in this case we are converting a to half of its value which gives me half of a okay minus 1 okay so you know maybe i just want to make it more obvious so i just remove the brackets over here okay so simplifying this simplifying this i will end up with 2 sine half a cosine half of a okay the numerical values in the denominator 1 and minus 1 will cancel each other out. Okay, so what do I mean? Let me just use a different color so it's more obvious. So 1 and minus 1 will be gone. Okay, and then going back to the denominator, I'll just be left with 2 cosine square half a. And cosine square half a, okay, let me just do a side working over here. Cosine square half of a is actually equivalent to cosine half of a times cosine half of a okay so let me just rewrite cosine square as cosine half a times cosine half a now in this step you will see that some magical things 
can happen. Okay, so I'll just show you what I mean. So since the numerator contains a product of functions as well as the denominator, we can perform some simple cancellations. Okay, so 2 divided by 2 is gone. Cosine half a divided by cosine half a is gone. Okay, and therefore we are left with sine half a over cosine half a, which initially we've discussed that this is just tangent half of a. Okay, so straight away we have already gotten to the answer that we want, which is tangent half a. Okay, and this happens to be my right hand side of the identity. And I'll just write over here that I've successfully proved it. Okay, so this brings us to the end of chapter 13.2. And just to summarize, in this chapter, we have learned the double angle formula. That's the three examples you can see, or rather the three formulae you can see over here on the screen now. Just a summary. And before I go off, just want to leave you guys with some practice questions. You can pause the video here and just take it down. And finally, just want to thank you guys for watching this video. For more videos, please log on to pencilcollege.com. See ya!